Hello everyone, uh, welcome to NPTEL online course on electric vehicles. In our previous interaction, uh, we have started a topic vehicle dynamics and we have covered uh, few topics under the vehicle dynamics such as introduction and tractive effort. Let us see some simulations uh, with respect to the topic of uh, tractive effort in today's interaction. So, we have seen that uh, the total effort that is required to move the vehicle is a sum of various forces such as uh, force due to rolling resistance, force due to gradient or slope, force due to aerodynamic uh, drag and force that is required such as uh, linear acceleration and angular acceleration. If you want to provide change in speed when the vehicle is moving. So, if we substitute the formulas of each of these forces, uh, we get this equation. So, force due to tractive effort is F R R which is mu R R m g cos theta, force due to gradient is m g sin theta, force due to aerodynamic drag is half rho C D A and square of uh, the addition of vehicle velocity and air velocity. And also we have acceleration forces due to linear moment and angular moment. So, we know that uh, the aerodynamic drag force is a function of square of vehicle velocity. So, if you want to see the variation in aerodynamic drag power with respect to vehicle velocity and also with respect to wind velocity, it will be good idea to plot the aerodynamic power with respect to different vehicle speeds. For non value of uh, drag coefficient, frontal area and air density. So, let us assume that we have a drag coefficient of 0.26, frontal area of 2.2 meter square and air density of 1.2 kg per meter cube. So, if we see the power due to aerodynamic drag at different vehicle speeds, let us say uh, we will see the variation from 0 kilometer per hour to 100 kilometer per hour. We will see a graph which is uh, this graph. So, we can see that the power is a q function of speed. So, therefore, the power required at very high speed is significantly high. So, let us say at 50 kilometer per hour, the power required is uh, around 1 kilowatt while the when the vehicle is operating at 100 km per hour, the requirement of power is 8 kilowatt. So, just by doubling the speed from 50 km per hour to 100 km per hour, the power required changes from 1 kilowatt to almost 8 kilowatt. So, this is a huge variation. Secondly, let us see that in addition to uh, vehicle velocity, if there is a strong wind of let us say 10 km per hour opposing the vehicle movement, then what will happen? So, this second curve uh, shows that effect. So, if the wind velocity of 10 km per hour is uh, opposing the vehicle movement, you need extra power of uh, around 2 kilowatt at 100 km per hour. Now, let us see the effect of variation of aerodynamic drag coefficient which is C d on the aerodynamic drag power. So, let us see that the previous case example, but with two values of C d. So, we have C d of 0.26 and C d of 0.4. Uh, the area is similar 2.2 meter square and rho of 1.25 kilometer per 
metric cube. So, if we take this example, we can see that if we increase the CD from 0 0.26 to 0 0.4, the amount of uh, power needed increases from 8 kilowatt uh, which we need when the CD is 0 0.26 to around 12 kilowatt when we are operating with a CD of 0 0.4. So, we need to support extra 4 kilowatt power if you are running at 100 kilometer per hour. So, you can see that the effect of uh, this coefficient is quite high and uh, there should be every effort to reduce the drag coefficient in electric vehicles because this amount of uh, power requirement can put uh, significant stress on uh, battery energy capacity. Now, let us see uh, all the forces uh, and their variation together. So, let us see the gradient force, aerodynamic force and rolling resistance force and the addition of these forces which is an attractive effort together in a same graph. So, we want to see the effect of this vehicle velocity on this forces and the power variation. Again, we will take the example uh, which we have taken uh, earlier that is CD of 0.26, A of 2.2, uh, rho of 1.25 and uh, let us assume a flat road where the theta is 0. So, when the theta is 0, uh, we know that there is no power required in terms of gradient force. So, it is uh, 0 because mg sin theta and sin theta is 0. And this is the variation of uh, force and the corresponding power required to support rolling resistance force. So, say dominantly a straight line. So, this is a weak function of uh, speed as we have seen. And we, when we talk about aerodynamic force which we have already seen, so it requires around 8 kilowatt at 100 km per hour. So, this uh, is containing the same graph as we have seen earlier. So, the total tractive effort is uh, somewhere around 10 kilowatt. So, it is the addition of, so P T E is addition of P A D plus uh, P rolling uh, resistance plus P gradient. So, gradient force is 0 here. So, let us see the similar result uh, uh, when we have are operating at a theta of 3 degrees. So, let us say the vehicle is moving on a slope of 3 degrees and uh, when we are operating the vehicle at different uh, speeds. So, in this case the only variation will be in terms of gradient power. So, gradient power now is extremely high. So, at 100 kilometer per hour it requires almost 20 kilowatt power. So, if we are driving the vehicle on a slope of 3 degrees the gradient power itself is so huge, it is around 20 kilowatt. The total tractive effort will be somewhere close to 35 kilowatt. So, you can see the effect of slope. So, uh, moving the vehicle on a slope uh, versus a flat road is uh, enormous. So, this effect will be very high if you are running at high speed on a slope. So, effect increases uh, linearly. So, uh, it also tells us that you know uh, if you are operating an electric vehicle on a uh, hill or in a slope terrain, it puts a heavy burden on the vehicle battery. So, it is always advised to operate the electric vehicle on a flat road uh, terrains for having a good range. Similarly, uh, let us see the effect of uh, all these forces when you are operating at a theta of minus 3 degrees. It means that we are uh, driving the vehicle down the slope. So, in this case uh, again similar to the previous case the gradient power required is around 22 uh, kilowatt at 100 kilometer per hour speed. 
So, when we see the total try to be effort now, it is uh, negative. So, it increases uh, with the tractive effort up to 70 kilometer per hour and after that it becomes flat and maybe started decreasing. So, what happens at that higher speed? At higher speeds, the power taken away by aerodynamic drags becomes very significant and the power what we can regenerate becomes lesser lesser because the aerodynamic uh, power becomes significant at higher speeds. So, this uh, graphs can be plotted using simple uh, simulation files. So, in this course uh, we are using uh, MATLAB as the simulation tool. So, the simulation file used to plot these graphs uh, is uh, elaborated here. So, first uh, generally in a simulation file, uh, we have to define the parameters and their values. So, in our case, uh, we need to define uh, the rolling friction coefficient uh, which let us say mu r r let us say 0 0.01, drag coefficient of 0 0.26, area of 2.2 meter square. Uh, mass of 100 kgs, air density of uh, 1.25 kg per meter cube, theta we can define in degrees, vehicle of the wind uh, we can give in kilometer per hour, but if we multiply it by 5 by 18, we convert it to meter per second. Then since we are plotting all the powers and the forces. Uh, so, these are forces due to all aerodynamic force, rolling resistance, gradient and total tractive power and power. Uh, so, we have to define all these variables and also we have to define arrays uh, because we need to store lot of data. So, against each speed we have to calculate the power and store as a data. So, we have to create arrays and uh, where the values of this uh, different forces and power will be stored. So, we have to define uh, uh, velocity as well, so, velocity forces and powers. Then we can run a for loop and the loop has to uh, run in uh, number of steps. So, let us say, say that we are uh, operating at the step of 1 kilometer per hour. So, we are varying the speed from 0 kilometer per hour to 100 kilometer per hour at a step of 1 kilometer per hour. So, for each iteration uh, we will calculate all the forces, uh, the total tractive effort, all the power and the total tractive power for each velocity and will store the results in uh, the array of uh, 100 values. So, having uh, got the values, we can plot this uh, power versus uh, velocity in either meter per second or kilometer per hour. So, whichever is feasible and since the power is quite huge, uh, we can plot in terms of kilowatts. So, we, if we divide by 1000, it means the power will be now plotted in uh, kilowatt and speed in kilometer per hour. So, this is simple exercise, it can be also done in C, C language which is uh, easily available to the students. Now, uh, let us go to our next topic which is uh, dynamic equations. So, we will try to drive uh, dynamic equations uh, which can be used for understanding the dynamics of vehicle for different kind of force input. So, the input is the force what we get from the propulsion or traction unit. So, how the system will behave for different kind of uh, this traction input force is a important uh, analysis parameter. So, this is the typical drive train of a electric vehicle. 
where a electric motor is connected via gears and differential to the wheels via driving axle. So, we use fixed gear generally in an electric vehicle. So, let us assume the gear ratio of the gear is g and its efficiency is eta g. So, let us try to find some basic relationship between different forces and uh, speeds. So, if we assume that the vehicle is moving at a velocity of v meter per second under a tractive effort of F T E, then we can say that the torque on the driving axle which is T wheel is equal to F T into R. So, this is a, a simple relationship between force and torque. Similarly, the angular velocity of the driving axle which we can denote as omega wheel can also be found out using this relationship. So, omega v is velocity by r. So, in a typical electric vehicle, the gear ratio is normally taken as greater than 1 it will be in the range of uh, 8 to 10 in most of the cases. We can also find the angular velocity of the shaft of the electrical motor using the gear ratio. So, we can say that omega m is g into omega v. In a electric vehicle drive train, generally the speed of the motor is higher while the speed of the wheel is lower. So, speed is reduced from motoring side to wheel side. We can also find the relationship of uh, torque of the motor shaft with respect to torque on the driving axle. This can be done uh, using power balance equation, which we can write uh, as follows. So, we can say that the power on the electrical machine shaft can be equal to power delivered on the driving axle. But since we are losing uh, some energy in the gears because of this efficiency, so we can also accommodate the losses in the gears by substituting eta g as a dividing factor to the power delivered on the driving axle. So, generally this losses has to be supported by the electrical machine. So, since we know the relation between omega m and omega wheel, we can find the relation between T m and T wheels as this. So, T m will be 1 by g eta g into T omega. So, here we can see that the motor torque is lower compared to wheel torque since it is divided by g and g is greater than 1.
So, in our previous uh, interaction, uh, we have uh, discussed about J x L, which is moment of inertia of the driving x l. So, this is the moment of inertia of all the components as seen by the driving x l. So, if we want to accommodate and understand the relation of the moment of inertia of a motor shaft in force equation, we may have to find the relation between J m and J x l. So, how we can do that? We can do that by using energy balance equation. We know that the energy stored in the mechanical shaft of electrical motor is uh, half J m omega m square and this has to be equalized to the energy stored in the driving axle which is half j axle into omega wheels square. But since we have to accommodate the losses in the gears, we have to divide it by eta g. So, here also we know the relation between omega m and omega wheel. and which can be used to find the relation between j x l and j m as g square by eta g. So, let us substitute uh, these relationships on the force equation. So, we know the force equation uh, as addition of different forces and let us now substitute you know torque of the vehicle x l on the F T E. So, we know F T E is torque on the wheels divided by R and also the relation of J x L with respect to inertia of the motor. We can also substitute uh, the motor torque in place of uh, X L torque by means of relation we have just seen as this. So, now this equation is in terms of uh, motor torque and inertia of the motor and the velocity we are still keeping the vehicle velocity. So, using this equation we can find the amount of torque that is required to be delivered from the motor if you want to operate the vehicle at a velocity which is V with all these uh, resistive forces in place. Let us try to uh, redefine this uh, equation in terms of dynamic equation in terms of velocity. So, if we resubstitute the thing and we bring this uh, term which is proportional to dv by dt on one side and uh, the tractic referred and the subtraction of all the resistive forces on the other side, we can get this equation d by d t will be g by r eta g t m minus uh, all the resistive forces and this will be divided by the equivalent mass on the vehicle axle. Now, uh, when the vehicle is in motion there can be different types of tractive effort that can be applied from the motor. So, let us start with a scenario where we are apply, applying a constant tractive effort means the F T E is constant. But in a practical scenario this F T E is not constant and it will be applied in a certain manner depending on the driving cycle of the vehicle. So, this also will be discussed later. So, let us start with the 
the derivation of dynamic equations when we are operating with a constant FTE. So, when we are uh, operating at constant FTE, the Tm will be also constant and this whole equation can be written in terms of some simple constants. So, dv by dt can be written as minus k1 v square plus k2. So, k2 is all constant uh, terms plus this k1 is a function of uh, this uh, aerodynamic force equivalence. So, this is the equation. So, we can see the values of k1 and k2. So, k2 is uh, basically uh, the constant parameters and k1 is, uh, is aerodynamic forces equivalent. So, if you want to understand the variation of velocity for this constant uh, force input, we need to solve this equation as a function of time. So, for solving this equation, let us assume few things. Let us say, uh, assume that k1 is equal to k1 a square and k2 is k2 a square. If you do this substitution, the solution can be easily derived. So, this equation will become this equation. So, k1 and k2 will be substituted by k1 a and k2 a. So, once this equation is uh, there, we can rewrite this equation in terms of this way. So, this you can rewrite in terms of this way. So, this is a separating variables method and we want to uh, understand the uh, variation of velocity with respect to time. Let us integrate this over uh, 0 to time t. If we do that, uh, we will get a, a logarithmic equation uh, which is like this and this can be first solved in terms of uh, exponential terms, thus we can remove this uh, logarithmic term like this. So, now it can be further simplified as uh, this equation and this equation is a uh, can be easily rewritten as v of t is k 2 a by k 1 a 10 of h k 1 a k 2 a into t. So, this is the equation uh, we were looking at. So, this can be further simplified and we will uh, again resubstitute the value of k 1 a and k 2 a in terms of k 1 k 2. So, k 1 a is uh, basically root of k 1 and k 2 a is root of k 2. So, if we substitute this, we will get this equation. So, this is the equation of uh, velocity variation with respect to time in terms of uh, variable k 1 and k 2, which are uh, you know the parameters of the system considering all kind of opposing forces and accelerating forces. So, what this equation uh, you know infer it? So, this infers at this the velocity will start from uh, let us say 0 meter per second and it will move towards a steady state value as the time elapses. So, what is the steady state value of this velocity? The steady state value or the terminal velocity can be find if we find the limit value as time approaches infinity. If we substitute this uh, limit as time tends to infinity, we will get a very simplified expression which is root over k 2 by k 1. So, terminal velocity is this. So, we can say that uh, this uh, v terminal value is equal to root of k 2 by k 1. So, which is a very uh, simple expression. So, once this value is uh, known, we can do this uh, 
simplified substitution which is root over k1 into k2 is now k1 into vt because uh, if you substitute this in a proper way you can able to find this expression and this can be substituted in this uh, expression of vt as this so this is uh, vt and this is k1 vt so this is the simplified expression of vt in terms of terminal velocity which the system will finally end to we can also use this equation to find the distance uh, the system travels in a finite amount of time so vt is nothing but d by dt of st so s is uh, basically uh, distance so if we integrate this we can get uh, the expression of s of t so s of t is 1 by k1 uh, logarithmic of cos h k1 vt so this is exponential graph and uh, let's say we want to understand you know the starting acceleration let's say we want to understand that if we are operating the vehicle and increasing the speed by constant torque input and we are increasing the speed from 0 meter per second to let's say vf meter per second and it typically takes a time equal to tf so when we are operating and going from 0 to vf uh, speed the time required is tf so what is this tf so we know the starting value of speed and the let's say final value of uh, vf which is lesser than vt then what is the time required for achieving that speed so that can be simply evaluated by using the expression of v so instead of v of t we will substitute vf and t will take it on the other side and it can be just 1 by k1 k2 tan h uh, inverse and this expression so this is just a reverse expression of uh, the velocity expression let's say uh, roughly we want to find that time when the velocity reaches almost 98 percent of the vt so if you want to understand tf for this uh, speed uh, range then we can simply substitute uh, vf as 0.98 and we all know that uh, root of uh, k2 by k1 is uh, vt so if we substitute this we'll get a very simplified expression for tf so this is a rough uh, value of uh, time we need to achieve 98 percent of the terminal velocity which is 2.3 by k1 into vt so these are some simple uh, formulas which can be used to do some performance analysis so once the tf is known uh, we can also find the distance which is transferred or achieved uh, when we are reaching the velocity of vf so we just substitute the tf in the expression of uh, distance we would also like to calculate the instantaneous power that is required to achieve this kind of operation so since we are operating at a constant input uh, force of ft the plot of uh, power will be similar to velocity plot so it will be also similar to uh, this so we are achieving you know the velocity vf at time tf so let us see the expression of power so p tractive effort is a product of f tractive effort into velocity so this can be just written so this is a constant number and vt is also constant number so this constant numbers can be clubbed and we can say that this is nothing but terminal power so we when the vt is reached 
the power required is p of t and the power required by the shaft of the motor is uh, you know this uh, power divided by efficiency of the gear. So, we can also find uh, the power that is uh, required uh, when we are operating at uh, velocity v f during time t f by just substituting t s t f here. So, the instantaneous uh, power equation is uh, very important, but uh, for energy calculations uh, we need to find the average power that is uh, required by the vehicle when it is operating from 0 rpm to the required rpm. So, it is always a good idea to calculate the average tractive power that is required. So, average tractive power will be somewhere here. So, it can be evaluated uh, by doing the integration 1 by T f 0 T f in uh, the expression of T respect to time and we will get this expression. This is very important expression in terms of uh, energy requirement that we will see. So, in an electric vehicle all the power is coming from battery and the integration of the power with respect to time is the energy. So, P t is nothing but d by d t of energy or energy is the integration of the power required. So, if we can understand the P t average, we can just multiply by T f to calculate the delta energy required from the battery. So, that is why this expression is important and when we want to understand the energy required to be delivered from the motor shaft, we have to just divide it by the uh, efficiency of the gears. So, that is all uh, under uh, you know dynamic equations. Uh, so, here we have covered uh, the derivation of dynamic equations in terms of force and uh, velocity, the expression of uh, distance, power, energy, all this for a constant uh, input effort. So, we have discussed constant input effort. So, we are yet to discuss uh, the dynamic equations when the F t is not constant. So, in our next interaction, we will try to simulate this uh, expressions of velocity, distance, uh, power, energy, all these equations for a known system and try to see its effect for different types of vehicle parameters, etcetera. So, we will do that in our next interaction. So, thank you for listening the lecture.